So I'm having a chat with Richie Ramone. How are you? I'm doing really good. How are you? Good, yeah. Not too bad. Thanks so much. So we're having a little chat because in a couple of weeks' time, you have your new solo record, Live to Tell, coming out. Tell us uh, what we can expect to hear on the record. Yeah. Well, it's fine. Today, actually, the single title track, Live to Tell, was released today digitally. So that's out right now. And, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, my finest work to date. It's my third solo album. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm really happy about the way it turned out. And, you know, when you do records, you always try to top yourself from the last one. And I think that's what I've been doing. So I want to keep on that path. Ah, great stuff. And uh, as you mentioned, this is your third solo record. How does this record sound in comparison to your previous two? I think it's a long, you know, the first one was I was just getting my feet in the sand, you know, like people said, oh, you should make a record. And, you know, there's a lot involved with making an album, you know, and creating your sound um, and, you know, being that I'm the singer and everything. My last album was terrific, and I feel this is a real Richie Ramone album. This is what represents me, you know. I'm not the Ramones. I'm Richie Ramone, which is a, you know, there's a difference between the two. But it still has, you know, the edge and everything that I like in, in writing music, you know, and the darkness, you know. So um, it's uh, it's great, you know. I don't know what else to say. I don't want to toot my own horn. People are going to have to judge for themselves. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they will. Now, obviously, it's been a fair few years since your last solo record. What was the, the writing process like for, for this record? Was it any different from your previous two? No, it's it's the same way. Remember, we had a deal, you know, which is still ongoing. A lot of this COVID stuff for like over mm-hmm. two years, which you know, um, I went into like this dark hole during that time because you really couldn't do anything, couldn't tour. I actually started, you know, acting during that time. But um, uh, the writing process is, you know, I get an idea or in a title, you know, and. Um, I definitely write the music first and the lyrics second, but I have an idea of, you know, the song title, you know, and then I want the groove and then, you know, I go from there and and work on the melodies and then, you know, the words, the words are always the longest for me, you know, because, you know, records have to mean something, you know, I just don't want to just throw them out there. That's why I took a few years to write another record because I just don't, you know, just sit there and, have interesting things to say every moment of the day, you know. I make a record when I really have something to say. And this is a this record's more about, you know, mental health and things we go through and how sometimes we don't want to get out of bed and depression and all kinds of things on this that are going to affect a lot of people when they read the lyrics and listen to these songs. So, um, you know, that's how this has gonna come about. I'm not what you call a happy writer, I think there's one fun song on this. The rest are very deep. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, definitely. And what made you write for yourself and release music under your own name rather than – what made you do it in the first place? Because obviously people know you from other bands in particular, the Ramones, of course. But what made you, do, right. what made you go solo? What made me go solo? Yeah. You know. I don't know, you know, after the Ramones, I stopped for quite a few years, and, you know, something was bothering me about, you know, inside, that I needed to get out there and get on tour, I had things to say, and that's why, you know, I went solo, you know, and I have, you know, people know me by Richie Ramone, I wasn't going to call myself, you know, Richie Reinhardt, or make a band name up, because then I'd really, people would really be lost, you know what I'm saying, so... I figured Richie Ramone was the best way to get to the audience. I go, oh, Richie made a record, you know, that type of thing. So, you know. Yeah, no, most definitely. And uh, you've been touring quite extensively, but uh, what's the plans for this year? uh, Because there's no dates really announced at the moment, just a couple of dates in California. So what's your plans for this year? Yeah, this year is... This year is slow. I'm, I'm taking it easy now. This is all about the record. I've been doing so, a lot of promotion on the record. You know, we just got off a big tour over Latin America. That was really good in December and November. And I've been out a lot, so I'm taking a little bit of a break. 
doing a little golf mm-hmm. and fishing and um actually, you know, you know, that's what their life is. It's golf, a little fishing, writing music and, you know, thinking of new things for next year and I think towards uh August uh, I may be in Sweden and then back, you know, down to South America and probably over to Europe in November. So we'll see how this goes. They're working on some things now, but it's actually nice to not tour for like four or five months. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love but, touring, you know, I love touring, but it, it can get tiring, you know. Yeah. You'd like a break as well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm enjoying the yeah. home life here. And so. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. And uh, let's, let's go back in time just a little bit. When, uh, Sure. You joined the Ramones. What what was going through your head when when the band decided to to bring you on board? It's, come on, you know, I was 25 years old. It was like, oh my god, my first national act. You know, I was you know for years and years, you know, looking to tour. You didn't have to work. You didn't have to do nothing. You can go whatever you do. You can go to the corner and buy a hamburger because you had money in your pocket. You know, but it was um, it was just thrilling because Joey Ramone took me under his wing, taught me so much. You know, we hit it off really right away. And he pushed me. He said, Rich, you sing more. Write some songs. We're making a new album. You know, like he just, you know, none of this would have happened. And, and they gave me the life I have today, you know, really. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, I always had, if you read my autobiography, I Know Better Now, uh, which is out on Amazon, um, I always had this five-year plan. I had this plan like, okay, I'm going to keep trying for five more years. If this doesn't happen, I've got to do something else, you know. And it pretty much happened in the fifth year, you know. It's kind of funny. And and now, you know, being in my 60s now, there's so much going on with, you know, me making movies and writing music for movies. And it's just, I don't know. I, I seem like, you know, more things are going on now than when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. But there was nothing like touring with the Ramones, you know. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything else better because it gave you an identity, you know. Like you were, you had that surname, you know. And if I was just a drummer in another band, you know, half the people really don't know who the drummer is. You understand? You became one of the, one of the boys, one of the elements that uh, is just fabulous. And you know, I'm blessed by that. And what a wonderful band to be a part of history. And you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, you touched on on your acting work. You've uh, you dipped your toe into the acting world. How's that been for you? That's been fabulous. I mean, you know, I'm not making blockbusters, but <laughs> you know, I have um, you know the B-roll movies, head cheese, the movies on Amazon. Uh, also on YouTube, you can find uh, Friday the Thirteenth, Vengeance Two, Bloodlines. Uh, I'm in that movie, which is, you know, uh, a fan-based film, you know. Um, also coming out is Portage Moir, where I play the king vampire in the village. And the director asked me to cover the Lost Boys, Cry Little Sister. So that's on this record coming out in two weeks. You know, Cry Little Sister, you know, that song. So uh, that's fabulous. And then there's another one called Youthful Quake coming out. And... Um, you know, it was just doing something like that was something totally new to me. Um, we had to study, you had to rehearse, you had to learn your lines. You know, it was, mm-hmm. it's a different process. And getting to meet all these actors, and, you know, they're pretty, uh, you know, I thought maybe they're all lightweights or something, but the actors are pretty wild. I mean, when the, <laughs> when the set goes down, they like to have a good time, you know. I mean, don't be fooled. It's, not, it's kind of like right along the rock and roll thing, you know, like mm. they're kind of misfits who come from, you know, weird backgrounds as a child and stuff like that. And that's what gives them that it factor, you know, that factor of something that put, you know, like a, like a particular musician or an actor that really has that thing naturally about them, you know, and that stems from the the childhood, you know, I believe. So, uh, yeah. something you can't get out of a book or you can't learn, you know, it's just in you. And I believe I have that in me and that's what's, you know, keeping me going. And as long as I can keep my edge and, uh, uh, you know, have something to say, I'm going to continue doing this, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's great to hear. Well, Richie, it's been a pleasure having a chat with you.
Uh, oh, thank you. And, you know, okay. just mention uh, RichRamon.com. There you'll find everything about the movies, all the new records, and all the things I'm doing right now. It's, it's an exciting uh, page, website, RichRamon.com, if anybody's interested. I'll tell you all the tours I'm going to be doing, what I've done, and all that. 